Number one, complete the changes in concentrations for each of the following reactions. And then we have this reaction right here. So we have C, uh, CA5PO43OH, that's a solid. But when that dissociates, it yields into its three ions. We have five Ca2 pluses, we have three PO4 three minuses, and we have one OH minus. Now they give us a little head start as to what the change in the hydroxide would be, but the question is, what would this change be, and what would this change be for, for the calcium? Well, to find out what the changes are, we always look at the mole ratio, aka the coefficients in front of these um, ions, right? So I go to the balance equation, I see that there's a 5 in front of the calcium, there's a 3 in front of the phosphate, the PO4, and there's no number in front of the hydroxide. But remember, any time that you don't have a number, you only have one of them. Now that's the reason why the OH- minus is just an x value, because a 1 would be dropped down here, meaning that it would change in concentration by 1 times the x value, but since it's just a 1, you don't have to care about the 1. But for all the other numbers, you have to put it in there. So for the calcium, the Ca2+, plus and the PO4-3-, minus, it has to change by some number, right? And I label it as x because the hydroxide was x. But now, this would change by 5 times x, or 5x, and the PO4 would change by 3x. So it's just as simple as just looking at your coefficients and writing down that change. So the calcium 2 plus would change the most because it's five times the variable. It has the greatest coefficient. The hydroxide would change the least because it's just a 1x or just an x. But that's the answer here, guys. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much for that. Let's keep studying hard, and I think we're moving on to number two. So hang tight. We've got more fun. All right. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.